So the specimen that we will discuss today is the liver. Now as you can see, the liver is the largest gland present in our body. The first thing that we have to understand is how to hold it in anatomical position. So for that, a very simple technique can be applied. On the posterior aspect of the liver, you can see the presence of the inferior vena cava. Right? This is the inferior vena cava. Now inferior vena cava is a straight tube. So what we can do is just hold the liver in such a way that the inferior from the inferior vena cava you can see the ground below. Okay? It has to be vertical in nature. So if I hold it in this way, this is basically the anatomical position of the liver. The liver consists of five surfaces. We have the superior surface that you can see over here, which is convex and is which is convex on both the sides, but it is depressed on the center where it is going to be attached with a diaphragm in the cardiac compression. The second surface that you can see is the anterior surface. This is going to be the anterior surface. Over here, this is going to be the right lateral surface. This is going to be the posterior surface. And this lower section is going to be the inferior surface. There are five different surfaces, but only one well-defined border can be seen over here, which is present over here. This is the inferior border. Okay. Now, along the inferior border, we can see the presence of two different kinds of notch. We can see over here. This notch, you can see the structure coming out of here. This is the fundus of the gallbladder. So this is known as a cystic notch. And this notch, which is basically having this ligament. So this is known as the interlobar notch. So on the inferior border, we have the interlobar notch. And here we have the cystic notch. On the anterior surface, you can see the presence of this ligament known as the falciform ligament. This falciform ligament divides the liver into two lobes. We have the right lobe and we have the left lobe. These two lobes, they are the anatomical lobes. So the lobes of the liver, the right lobe and the left lobe are separated by this ligament known as the falciform ligament. Okay, here. Now along the superior surface, Here you can see difference in the color of two areas. Now over here you can see that this area is quite shiny and this area is not shiny. So the area which is present behind the shiny portion this is known as the bare area of the liver. Now this is that area of the liver which does not have any peritoneal reflections. Bare area of the liver usually is triangular in nature. The left margin is going to be formed by the inferior vena cava. The upper limit is formed by the superior layer of the coronary ligament. The inferior limit is going to be formed by the inferior layer of the coronary ligament and on the right side is going to be formed by the right triangular ligament. The posterior surface, when we look from the right to the left side, obviously we have the bare area over here. Then we have this structure, this is known as the inferior vena cava. Next to the inferior vena cava, we have this lobe, which is known as the caudate lobe. The caudate lobe is bounded on the right side by the inferior vena cava, and on the left side by this fissure, which is known as the fissure for the ligamentum veno venosum. This is the fissure for ligamentum venosum. Inferiorly, you can see we have the porta hepatis. So this is the caudate lobe. And next to the caudate lobe, this is going to be the esophageal area. So on the posterior surface, we have the bare area, we have the inferior vena cava, the caudate process and the esophageal impression. Now this caudate process, has, this caudate lobe has a process which is going downwards, which is known as the caudate process, which lies in between the inferior vena cava and the porta hepatis. On the inferior side, if you look from the right side to the left side, what we are going to see is this impression, this impression belongs to the colic area. Next, this is the fossa for the gallbladder. Here you can see the gallbladder. This is the fossa for the gallbladder. Towards the left of the gallbladder, you can see this lobe. This lobe is known as the quadrate lobe. The quadrate lobe is bounded superiorly by the porta hepatis. On the right side by the fossa for the gallbladder. On the left side for the liver by the fissure of the ligamentum teres and inferiorly by the inferior border of the liver. Okay, 
Now, if we look at the impressions present on the liver, this whole left side, we are going to have the impression of the gastric area or the gastric impression on this side, followed by the quadrate lobe. Then we have the impression of the duodenum, which will go down. And here we have the impression of the colic area. In the upper part, this is the impression of the right renal area. So this is the impression of the right kidney. Okay. Now, the structure that you can see over here, this is known as a porta hepatis. Porta hepatis is basically a gateway wherein few structures are entering and some structures are coming up. So the structures present in the porta hepatis basically are the bile duct, the portal vein, and the hepatic artery. This is the proper hepatic artery. So we have the bile duct, the portal vein, and the proper hepatic artery. So these are few structures which you have to know while demonstrating the liver. The ligaments that we have present over here are the falciform ligament. In the lower section of the falciform ligament, you can see the presence of a cord-like structure. This is known as the ligamentum teres hepatis, which is basically a remnant of the obliterated left umbilical vein. Over here you can see we have the superior border or the superior layer of the coronary ligament. Posteriorly, if we go over here, we have the fissure for the ligamentum teres, the fissure for the ligamentum venosa. Now here, if you look at the inferior vena cava properly, this is the inferior vena cava. In the inferior vena cava, you can see the openings of the hepatic veins. Here you can see the openings of the hepatic veins. Now the openings or the hepatic veins are the main reason which is responsible for keeping the liver in its normal position. So these are few structures which have, you have to understand while demonstrating the liver.